What's good, people? You're tuned into Big Condo Online. I am Rosie Rothschild. This is the community podcast. Um, unfortunately, today you're going to be dealing with me because Chase is not being well. He's in hospital. We do wish him all, all the best and hope he gets better. And obviously, he comes home next week. I'm sure he will do. So we get well, Chase. But um, I have an amazing guest with me today. She goes by the name of Lucy the Voice. <laughs> Um, I've known her for a very long time. It must be like four, six years or something now. I think I think it is that. But um, I thought it'd be amazing to get her in today. So um, let's start by why you called Lucy the Voice. Well, um, I've been on the poetry scene in Liverpool for about five years. And uh, it was something that people had started to mention to me that it's going to sound like I'm blowing my own trumpet here, but people started to comment on the tone of my voice and that they actually really enjoyed listening to it. And um, that was quite a revelation to me. I'd never had anything said like that to me before. And in fact, it was um, with the jobs I'd had before, I, w I, I was quite often told that I was really quiet and it was difficult for people to hear me. So I actually used to think my voice was mm. a problem. But... Um, on the creative scene, which was a new area for me, it was a completely different um, environment and people actually appreciated my voice. So it was, again, a, a really nice surprise. And um, so, yeah, it was the timbre or tone that people were commenting on. So people apparently really enjoy listening to me speak. So um, that became a kind of nickname. A couple of guys on the scene started to say that, so... What what type of thing are they saying about your voice? What what do you mean? Is it is it like a, a soft sound soothing. or a soothing, soothing sound? Yeah, <laughs> in a sense uh. of um, I don't know, like an author that would do an audio yes, type. Yes, I've of had voice. that recommended. Actually, yeah. some people have said, you know, you should do an audio book. Mm. Some people have said, you know, you can come to my house and sing me lullabies <laughs> to send me to sleep anytime you like, that sort of thing, you know, sort of something that puts people at, at ease and at rest. Yeah. And uh, quite a few people have mentioned possibly doing voiceovers, okay. you know, um, so I've, I've not really, I really appreciate that. And it's actually something I'd love to try. I yeah, just yeah. haven't had time to think about how you would go about it. Or one of the meditation tapes. Yeah, that's been mentioned as, as well. It, All yeah. the things yeah, you yeah. said, yeah, which I would love to do. I love I love reading out loud. I love reading to people. That's mm. another thing. Um, you know, and as things have gone on, I've enjoyed using my voice in different ways because it's given me confidence. So how, how long have you been doing the poetry and spoken it word? It probably started about five years ago. I'd had um, some big changes in my life and I was looking to go out and more and start mi really mixing with people and uh, my mum had always been a poetry fan and I just had this idea you know what about poetry readings um, and I knew Liverpool was fairly famous for that sort of thing anyway so I just started looking into it and I think the first one I ever went to was a lovely word at the Everyman Bistro yeah. and then I started going to Liver Bards and I got um, in touch with all the different events that were going on throughout the mo each month. And um, I s kind of went to them quite intensively for a while. Yeah. Um, so it's, it, yeah, it's a good few years now. Um, but it's. Was you a natural? Yeah. What I mean uh, is, oh obviously, uh, yeah. it, it, was you already writing before you came to these I events? I was, but yeah. many, many years ago. Yeah. I mean, my, my work, my career before that had been, it had interfered really with. Um, most of my artistic pursuits so they were kind of on the back burner for quite a while um, but I would say I hadn't really seriously written poetry since being a teenager but it was always in me yeah, yeah. and it was really lovely to process emotions and things mm. much later in life through writing poetry it was very therapeutic for me yeah is that why you started it to, to, as a therapeutic process um yeah, I would say so, actually. Mm. And um, you do find that as you go through different changes, um, you start to write different poems according to where you are in your yeah. life, you know, so. Well, what type of methods do you use? What I mean is, obviously, um, me, myself, personally, as a creative artist, I have many methods of how I structure songs or how I put yeah. a song together. So how do you actually come up with the words to say in the poetry? Quite often it starts with a kind of um, 
maybe just two or three words, like a yeah. phrase that I really like the sound of. And I'll jot that down and sometimes build a whole poem around it, you yeah. know. Because um, sometimes that phrase can represent a feeling that I've got. Um, but there's another process that started happening more recently when people have actually asked me to write to a theme. So there's been a themed event okay. where... And I enjoyed that process. I hadn't done it before. It had all been purely emotional stuff. But then when I got asked to do these sorts of things, I um, I then got into writing poems that were actually stories mm. and a complete narrative, like, from start to finish. Um, so that was quite exciting. So that's kind of a, a separate process that I have yeah, yeah. where I'll do research and I'll find out the background to the story yeah, I'm yeah. trying to write and then I'll put it into, like, a poetic mm. form. So wh When you're doing the... Poetic form is the like a structure that you follow because myself personally I'm a rap artist yeah. so it's kind of I do a lot of poetry yeah but uh, we w I work with so many different structures of the way words can be put together so yes. is the any like techniques that you use when you're building them structures um not really in the sense of being like formal styles of poetry mm. where you can recognize um, you know. A A B B or A B A B that mm. kind of thing. It yeah, doesn't. Like I don't. And things like yeah, that. yeah, I yeah. don't consciously do that. Sometimes it turns out that way. Yeah. you know. Mm. So it's quite free thinking, really. Mm. So you normally have a partner in crime. <laughs> yes, she's not available <laughs> today. Yeah. <laughs> so um, should we go into the sonic duo yeah. and uh, the musical influences mm -hmm. behind that? Because um, this is where the music comes into it, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, do you want to tell us a bit about that? Yeah, so my partner um, is Carolyn Carr, mm -hmm. and um, she is a, she lives qu uh, we live quite near each other, and we met though actually through Nicola Hardman, who's a local um, musician. Nick's amazing, and you know Nick, yeah, 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 she is brilliant, and she was the thing was we were both taking singing lessons from her. Okay, and then at one of her um, mon uh, monthly We Want Women events, we met in person mm. and it kind of went from there and um carolyn was very interested in because uh, at the same time she'd been taking drumming lessons with liber drummers she still belongs to that group so they meet normally every saturday morning and they practice rhythms what type of drums because i know i've yeah. seen is it the, the bongos i've seen her play or is it the she congas? can do but the main drum is the djembe which is an yeah. african instrument but there's no full kit. She's not in a she house with the, with the full well, kit. Well, she has so got a full kit. Actually, yeah. um, and she had started taking lessons with kit mm. drums. Um, she's not pursuing that at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, she's a, I would definitely define her as a percussionist. Mm -hmm. She's got an incredibly precise musical ear. She can hear notes and tell if a note is wrong, that kind of thing. Uh, completely different from me. Um so she's very technical in that sense, has a real technical ability. Um, and she's tried other instruments. You know, she knows a bit of piano. She can play a bit of guitar. But you know how people often say a certain instrument is their instrument? Yeah, yeah. She is a drummer, for mm. sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, so... Does she tap? Meaning... I, I, well, I'm, a, I'm around musicians all the time. And yeah. a lot of drummers are normally, when they sit in front of me... Yeah. Tap. Oh, I see. Um, tap. <laughs> I don't think I've seen her do that. Actually, she's she's yeah. um, no. I guess she's not typical in that sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. I mean, she was very interested in um, us getting together and doing something out outside our singing lessons, like having mm. some kind of application for the the kind of s training we were getting. Yeah. And she did ask me in the end. She said, "Have you ever thought of setting your poetry to music?" Mm. And a couple of people had asked me that in the past as well. And I'd briefly thought of it never really had the chance to do anything about it so we tried things and at first we were trying covers you know and then she said well what about your own poetry you I'm know i'm interested sorry <laughs> what, what covers <laughs> I, 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 um, I, were you trying well uh, it, it that part didn't go too far so all we tried up to that point mm. was i've forgotten the um there were a few pieces from peaky blinders mm. and um so nick cave and uh I, I'm sorry, it's a bit foggy now. Yeah, yeah I'd like to hear um, how they sound. I thought, but quite a you know, quite sort of mm, percussive, mm. Um, maybe touching on the aggressive sort of yeah, yeah. things we thought would fit with the rhythms. Yeah, yeah. 
but then in the end we you know after she mentioned my own poetry we tried it and that kind of took off and I think we were more proud of that because of course mm. it was completely original and I've got an endless supply you know there's things I haven't even written yet that I want to write so that was very gratifying um but it made her in many cases do like kind of accent drumming where it's not a, a continual rhythm it's sort of doing different types of sounds on the yeah, djembe yeah. that would highlight certain words. Mm. But more recently, we've noticed the effect on audiences when you have a hypnotic rhythm going. Yeah, yeah. And this is what we want to really get mm. into now. So this is our direction for the future. I think one of the pieces that I remember you doing, I don't know, it was kind of like, like a jungle type uh, feel on it yeah 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 what's that piece called again that was um probably my name is gaia which Mm. was about the it's it tells the ancient greek myth of the creation of the heavens and the earth yeah Yeah. yeah, yeah. it comes across very artsy as well yeah the the whole piece because it's not just speaking of music it's got like a i don't know that these a bit of i'd say uh, performing acting involved yeah. in the way you're moving yeah, it's on quite stage theatrical yeah yes. yeah that's it theatrical yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what i meant yeah so what what do you think your uh best performances have been and where well and i'm not just saying this mm. uh the one we did um which you kindly invited us to do at studio two yeah, yeah. that was we were really happy with that mm. it was just we felt in our element we had a c- colleague with us then yeah, yeah. uh tweet tweet yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. um she she provides woodwind whenever we can get together you know but um no i mean the sound support as well was excellent and um i remembered everything (laughs) didn't make any mistakes you know i think it was the first kind of perfect performance we'd ever done and the stage was great and looking back on the photos and um twee has actually um made a some videos for us with some of that material Mm. so we could see ourselves and you know especially when you slow it down even if it's out of sync with the audio you get such a dramatic effect and the backdrop and everything and it yeah it was just that was certainly a memorable one yeah it's a part of history for you know so because yeah studio two's gone now yeah i I wasn't sure what had happened i knew they were talking about Mm. it that's just so sad well at least we got to perform there that's that's the main thing you know what i mean so what is one of your worst performances? <laughs> I've se- I've seen you d- do something in a bear cage. Oh, I've seen pictures yes. from something in a bear cage. <laughs> um, the bird cage one actually worked well. It's just that, it that was very unusual, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, but yeah. people and very people unique. people have asked afterwards, um, "Is that bird cage still there? Are you going to do that bird cage again?" <laughs> and it, it yeah. was fun. The only mm. trouble was it was the Albert Dock, and it was very very cold that day. Yeah. So that was kind of a little lesson learned, mm. actually. That we may have to be a little bit careful about outdoor performances um, because Carolyn's discovered that some of the drumming sounds that she wants to make don't really carry. Outside, because you you need to um, bounce back. Yes, yes. Yes. Mm. And that's another reason why we're thinking about going in this direction of more continual sort of hypnotic rhythms um, because they just carry better. and Smaller audience. Yeah, yeah. So at the moment, ideally... Small, intimate places mm. are best. Um, but, you know, I mean, if we can adapt what we're doing, we can perhaps consider other venues and outdoor performances a bit more. So w- w- what is w- your w- w- worst, perform- worst performance? Well, I-, I wouldn't say I've had a, a, a bad one ever mm. a- as part of the sonic duo. I mean, some have been slightly better yeah, than yeah. others, but never a bad one. But m- my personal worst, <laughs> before I even met Carolyn, was... Um, it was at Sound on Duke Street. Oh, yeah, that's gone as well. Oh, has it? Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> gone. I, didn't. Uh, I mean, that seems like it's only been there five minutes. Yeah, yeah. Um, a shame in a way, because I've had some f- really fun evenings down there, actually. But the one where I really bombed, in fact, I've bombed there twice. <laughs> Once was because I'd woken up at five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. I was really overtired, and I completely went blank. Yeah, yeah. Drew a complete blank. It was like... If you can imagine the surface of the moon, that was yeah, the yeah. inside of my head at the time. So um, that was when I was trying to recite without notes, which I'm much better at now. Yeah. yeah. But um, I, I redeemed myself at the end and I used my notes, so I came back a bit later and did yeah, it. Yeah. Um, but what was even worse than that was I, 
I tried to sing. I was just getting into singing and I just wanted to kind of do it like a bit of an open mic. And yeah, there were yeah. a couple of other people doing that as well. But I knew nothing about anything. Mm. So I didn't know you could have reverb or oh, anything, you know, yeah, and yeah. it was completely cold. And I got very distracted by um, a couple of guys that started scuffling in the audience yeah, <laughs> while yeah, I was yeah. trying to perform. Mm. I couldn't see them because it was dark, you know, but I could hear this fight breaking out. Yeah, you know? yeah. I'm not sort of laying all the blame on them, but it really didn't help. We will. We're uh, going to lay uh, the blame uh, on them. It's totally <laughs> their fault. It was. <laughs> it, you know, it really didn't yeah. help. And um, I was just learning to sing songs I really liked. Mm. And I was trying to sing House of the Rising Sun a cappella. Um, and it was not very good, you know. Mm. And But the audience members, they, some of them were so kind. You yeah, know, they, yeah. they came up to Supportive. me later and, you know, they... Um, and, and in fact, in both cases, in both sort of instances, um, I had some really kind comments afterwards. Um, I think they could recognise that I had some potential. And at the moment, at that time, I had to kind of be satisfied with that, you know. But it yeah. was really... I found it really embarrassing and mm. I never forgot it. You know, it was a, it was a big lesson, yeah. no, actually. Because I should have asked ahead of time. I found out from Nicola mm. later, you know, she said, don't be afraid to go and ask for what you need ahead of time. And I should have asked the sound technician to... He didn't know what I was going to do. Yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. know I could ask him for anything, mm. you know. So it was all a learning curve. <laughs> I totally understand. In, in 2019, <laughs> I was on tour. We was in Witness and I didn't have time to rehearse. And oh I just turned God. up on tour without rehearsals yeah. and we get into the third song and I forgot everything <gasps> oh. and every, the music's just playing and everyone's looking at me and I'm just like yeah what do you do yeah I can't do this oh my god <laughs> yeah. yeah but yeah oh, I was I kicking feel, myself I feel over your that. pain definitely yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was bad it's like move on move on <laughs> <laughs> so um You've got some exti exciting stuff coming up, mm -hmm. okay? Um, obviously, we're not going to talk so much about performing in places because this whole COVID you situation, you just don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. But you were talking about um, new music within the poetry yeah. and uh, you're coming up with new things with drums and things. Yeah. So do you want to talk a little bit about yeah, that? Um, yeah, so uh, as, as I think I said, we, um, we've discovered that we're very interested in feedback that we get yeah. so that we can develop the act. And uh, like you were mentioning, you know, people have noticed that it has a theatrical kind of element mm. to it. So um, when we can sort of think more carefully about, you know, getting head mics and things like that, the sort yeah, of yeah. equipment that we might need that might enable a bit more of a dramatic performance, you know. When you say head mics, you're <laughs> talking Britney Spears. <laughs> I, I, I haven't <laughs> seen her for years. I mean, yeah. Um, or, you know, like Madonna it's uses. The, it's the yeah, like that. yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm not yeah. really keen on the idea mm. from a sort of aesthetic point of view. Yeah, yeah. But if you do want to move around, it really yeah, helps, yeah, it you know. Because yeah, yeah. I do tend to gesticulate a lot mm. naturally as a person. And I use my hands a lot more now, too, in performance. So I can see the benefit of it. Um, so that's one aspect. And then with drumming, um, Carolyn's, uh, yeah, I mean, the feedback I would say is at least equal, if not more towards the drumming side. Mm. When people come up to us after performances, the focus is, um, I mean, they like us both, but yeah. I mean, the focus <laughs> is on the, on the drum. Yeah. They just yeah. find it really novel and mm. fascinating. And, um, I mean, we've been at events where, rap artists have been there and they've asked Carolyn to back them up oh, yeah, all of a yeah, sudden yeah, yeah. and yeah. she'll do it, you know, mm. and it goes on quite a long time, but it's perfectly fitting for that sort yeah, of yeah. sound. Um, but yeah, when we've done the more hypnotic pieces that we have, um, we, we always get particularly good feedback on mm. those. So we keep saying to each other, you know, we've got to develop this side of it. So th those are our plans. And so now I'm going to kind of almost reverse my process. Mm. And Carolyn sent me djembe beats, the different types of beats. And I'm going to listen carefully to those and try to write to the beat. Okay. So is, is, than is this kind of the new process? She's yeah. going to record some drums, yeah. send them over, yes. and you're going to write to the to the beat yeah. rather than you write and she creates yeah. the beat. Yeah. yeah. That sounds yeah. really good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But um, who are your influences life influences music and poetry um well for in life generally um i would definitely say my parents mm. i mean that might sound kind of a little bit predictable but my my mum and dad were um i adored them and we had a great relationship all of us um i mean i had my dad for a lot longer than i had my mum yeah so he in a 
in a sense, was perhaps a more intense influence mm. because of the time frame. Um, but a very, very strong person who I admired in many ways. So he kind of, I would say, um, almost sort of... Um, he, he got me interested in... in um, certainly in film and actors and things like that and had a there was a big american influence for him he was quite sporty as well as a younger mm-hmm. man um into boxing and wrestling so boxing funnily enough i've, I've got quite a lot of masculine interests yeah, yeah. so boxing has always been a you know physical culture in general but boxing was a big big influence for my dad the golden era particularly mm. you know of the 60s and yeah, 70s yeah. um and also before that, when he was a young boy, a teenager, you know, there were you know people like Joe Lewis and, and famous boxers like that. Joe Lewis is my favorite boxer. Yeah, I'm so pleased to hear yeah, yeah. that because my, my fear, I have a kind of fear that all these wonderful people in history mm. will get forgotten. Yeah, yeah. But I love it, especially in Liverpool, because everybody's so switched on here. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. And they know about stuff, even mm. if they're like many generations down the line. Yeah, yeah. So that really pleases me to hear that um so yeah he had his heroes i think he i would say as a kind of an archetype or an icon in our lives the heroes were always a big thing yeah, yeah um so that's sort of in life and then i had a long career as a scientist but have, have you done it a bit <laughs> there, sorry <laughs> have you done any boxing yourself uh, only with my dad <laughs> you know and dad. a little bit of wrestling oh, too sorry. when i was much much younger you know um yeah. So he was happy to have a girl. I, yeah. I'm the only child. He was happy to have a girl. But I often used to think, you know, maybe a son would have been better yeah, for yeah, those yeah. bits, you know. Um, well, you, so, you, yeah. You've done, a, uh, you're doing sort of done bits in science. Yeah, well, that yeah. was, you know, that's what I went into as a, as a living, if you yeah. like. Because um, I had an interest in biology, which kind of went with my artwork, because I was an what artist. What type of science? So, like, I w- yeah. nuclear weapons? Oh, uh, no, <laughs> no. It was... Um, biology and um i just loved the way things kind of worked in nature mm. so that led me down that path i mean i would have become an artist if i could have been sure i'd be able to make a living out of it because yeah. i love drawing and i started that at an early age mm. portraits really of film stars mainly yeah, yeah. um do you still and i do still that do now? that yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I i left it for a long time mm. and picked it up again about around the same time i started doing poetry and some of those pictures are online now, yeah, and yeah. I've kind of built that up. Um, but I love iconic portraiture, you know. I love trying to get the likeness of somebody yeah, famous. Yeah. I think I've seen some pictures. I think yeah. I've actually commented on some th- in the past. Yeah, you yeah, have, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I do sporting yeah. types. I've done Muhammad mm. Ali, and, you know, recently I've done a, a set of musicians, Jimi yeah. Hendrix and various others. So, um, so that was another kind of sideline for a while, but I've gotten into it more now. In poetry, I have to say, um, probably Walt Whitman, American poet, yeah. is the one that springs to mind immediately as mm. a favorite. But I like William Blake, who was very spiritual. And uh, there's a German poet um, who... Uh, is it Eric, um, <laughs> I've forgotten his it's name. Now that's there. kind of embarrassing. It happens to me all the time. Um, Somebody about it. Uh, yeah. yeah, sorry, I'd have to look that up. Um, but he's he does very sensual poetry, uh, even in translation, and I love that too. So I love poems that are kind of quite um, almost physical or muscular, yeah, you yeah. know, and celebrate um, the romantic forms of love as well. So um, that's kind of what I go to there. Um, and with music, um, that sort of keeps changing. Um, you two were a big influence for years. Is that because they put the album on the iPhone? Uh, no, I, no. <laughs> Everyone I mean, got forced the album on the <laughs> iPhone to, uh, four years ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah did. No, I just, yeah. um, to be honest with you, mm. I, I kind of hate to say this, but I sort of lost touch a bit with what they were doing, you know, Recent, a few recent, years yeah, and more yeah. recently. But when I was in my 20s and 30s, um, they were a, a big thing for me and quite a constant influence. Um, but I went through a phase, I mean, I still am in that phase, I guess, of really appreciating Frank Sinatra. Yeah, yeah. 
my dad because he was my mum and dad's favorite mm. and then that introduced me to him and you know some of his albums are just so complete it's kind of you almost feel it's the only music you'd ever need yeah, yeah. you know um so that got me into if you like in quotes more mm. adult music um but i've been kind of now that I'm learning guitar, <laughs> that's yeah, another yeah. thing I'm doing. <laughs> Not very good at yeah. it, but you know, I've just started. But now that I'm into that, I'm I'm um, sort of, you know, the whole world of like superb guitarists has kind of opened up. And of yeah, course, yeah. Jimi Hendrix is mm. just my uh, absolute idol in that area. It's not even so much, although a brilliant player and a good singer. It, it's more. I think what impresses me more than anything is his. Um, the way he's totally sent, like transported when yeah, he's yeah. playing, you just have to watch his face. Mm. And it's the fact that he's able to let go so much in his playing. And I think that's what I want to be able to do one day, you know, to, to be completely lost yeah, yeah. in the playing. Yeah, yeah. You know? So that's kind of my personal goal. Mm. Um, well, while we're talking about being lost and, <laughs> yeah. and performing. <laughs> uh, we did say earlier on that you, you'd be kind enough to give us a little yeah. piece, 30 seconds, 60 sure. second piece. So um, it can be anything okay. that you've done. Are you okay to do that yeah, now? That's yeah, that's fine, well, sure. Then. Let's go. Um, one of the more recent newer pieces that Carolyn and I have been doing um, kind of touches on more spiritual aspects of things. Mm. This is actually a poem which tells the story of two of Jesus's most mm. dramatic miracles. The calming of the storm on the Sea of Galilee, followed by the exorcism of the possessed man. Okay. So I, I don't know how many people are yeah. familiar with the New Testament mm. anymore, but that's where they come from. Okay. I read the Bible the other week. <laughs> Old Bible, yeah. Seriously? Yeah, yeah. My God. Mm. You must have been doing it 24-7, because it's a very long book. Is it audio? Oh, right. Yeah, when I say read, I mean the audio. Oh, yeah, you listened. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, so you'll probably recognize this. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so this is called Legion. Mm. We climbed into the tiny boat to row across the lake. Little did we know just then the courage it would take. The wind got up with each rolling wave churning. Master, we called him. Please save us. We're learning how to sail against the odds. Tell us how it's done. Surely you know how. You're the sun. But then we stopped short as he rose from his sleep. Have you no faith? His voice sonorous, deep. As if nothing at all, he calmed that vast storm. Who was this man who could transform the earth's very elements and so much more? we soon found out when we clambered ashore. A man lurched towards us from his cemetery home, screaming and biting, lips covered in foam. No chains could have held him. The neighbours had tried, imprisoned by demons. His own self had died. Or so we had thought, till Master inquired, Who are you? Identify yourself. The voices replied, I am Legion, for we are many, the demons explained, begging and pleading not to be tamed. Master allowed it, accepting the bet, casting them out, his eyes righteous and set. He pointed his finger, angry and stiff, by pigs hurtled forward, straight off a cliff. The strange man was quiet, calm and beclothed, his ego and id newly betrothed. His gratitude rampant, the master divine, and an unsuspecting herd of gathering swine. Yeah, <laughs> that was awesome. I'm not gonna lie. That was, do you know what that what felt like? Yeah, it felt like a storybook. Yeah, that's what it felt like, like an audio <laughs> studio book. I'm very impressed. Yeah. Very impressed. It's, it's very exciting with the drumming behind oh, it. Oh, it is. I was yeah. trying to keep myself silent and just so <laughs> just let you get on with your thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? No but yeah, but mm. um, 
obviously everything that we've, we've heard from you today, it's all, it's all been amazing. And we've spoke about the music, the poetry, the making. We've even heard your stuff. It sounds amazing. But can we go into uh, your journey of, yeah. you know, how you've actually got to where you're at? I think mm. I heard you say before you are originally from Canada or you lived in Canada. Uh, yeah, we lived there. Um, I'm, I was born in Southport. My parents were from Southport um, and all our families were from Liverpool. Um my granddad was from the Dingle. And um, we, when I was a, a little tot, we emigrated to Canada. So we lived there for a very long time. So I actually ended up growing up there. Where about in Canada? Uh, in Ottawa, in the capital city. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, the nearest big city is Montreal, mm. which yeah. is about two hours away. So distances are big there. <laughs> but um, and my mum had family out there. She was from a large family, and two of her sisters were out there. So is your mum Canadian? No, we're, we're all from here. Okay. Um, and her sisters too, mm. you know. But I do now have cousins who are still living out there. So, um, so yeah, that was... Um, I mean, we'd always planned to come back to England. We still felt very attached. Yeah, yeah. But it took a longer than... We got settled and I was mm. going to school and it took a long time to kind of make that decision, really, to, to come back. So um, then when we did... I mean, I loved it. It wasn't a culture shock or anything like that. Um, but... Was the big differences between here and uh, Canada? Yeah, there are some. I mean, mm. certainly the climate. That's yeah. probably the most obvious one because the Canadian climate's very extreme. Certainly where we were anyway. Is it all snow and cold? Or no, is that just well, in the winter, tally? but yeah. in the summers are very, very hot. hot hard, yeah. So you're getting both, you know. So... Um, there was that to kind of cope with, and then so England's a lot more temperate and you know easy to kind of live with in terms of climate. Um, people are rather different. It's much more built up in England. Uh, lots of houses, you mm. know, and close together and things like that. Um, but I, yeah, there was a little bit of getting used to certain things like queuing, <laughs> queuing everywhere in shops. Queuing, you know, what do you mean? You know, in As terms in waiting, of in yeah, line. waiting yeah. in line, yeah, yeah. you know, because the population's so so much smaller in Canada in mm. a vast space you know you, you know a queue in a shot might be six people long you know? yeah. so it's, I mean that would be something quite noticeable you know so so there were certain sort of you know cultural things and yeah. population density aspects that um, took a little bit of adjustment mm. but that was all um, and then I had you know a long period of working very hard really mm. so I had this um, I was a research scientist at Liverpool University for quite a long time, about 10 years. And then um, I then went more into the teaching side. So yeah. I became a lecturer in veterinary science mm. at Liverpool and enjoyed that teaching very much. I was yeah. lucky I got to teach things I really liked. Um, and then I, w I suppose in a way I was moving towards er early retirement because mm. I'd, I'd already reduced my hours because... I was finding that I wasn't ever able to get going on any of my artistic stuff, yeah, yeah. you know. Do you feel because you focused so much on all your uh, science and your uni and things like yeah. that, that you put all your artistic projects to one side? I did, absolutely, yeah. because the kind of work I was doing, I mean, I, I, I was doing my degree and, and mm. so on, which took a lot of time. And then the job itself was very, very preoccupying, yeah, yeah. you know. Um so, yeah, there just wasn't the headspace, really, to pursue it in it. I mean, some people manage it, but I just couldn't really do both. Yeah, yeah. And I was starting to really regret that. Mm. And, um, you know, I got an opportunity to retire early. So I it was a little sooner than I would have done it. Yeah, yeah. But I, um, I'm i glad I did it. It mm. was more or less at the right time. You yeah, know. Yeah. Um, so there was time then to start writing more and... Um, you know, to get together with Carolyn and etc. You know, so it's been very, you know, yeah. I've been. I feel very f grateful and fortunate with all of that. You know, so in terms of career, that's kind of the the journey I've the been journey, on. Yeah. And um, I got into poetry uh, shortly after I lost my dad, mm. um, and it helped process some emotions to do with losing my parents. Pain. You know, yeah. which pain. Yeah. Um, and it did help, you know, but it also brought me, I think probably if I had a message for everyone out there, the, the thing that's been the most astounding to me has been when you get into the creative community, um, 
it's an incredibly forgiving community. You know, the people are very accepting yeah, yeah. of difference. Mm. And, you know, I found things out about myself. I got feedback that I'd never had before. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I realized I had these other dimensions that I never knew about. So in terms of a journey of self, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, self-actualization, mm -hmm. that's the expression, um, which is one of the things that interests me more than anything in life, you know, is, is becoming the person you're all, you were always meant to yeah, be. Yeah. And the creative field definitely allows that. Um, so, yeah, people are very... Um, generous people in terms of emotions and yeah, yeah. acceptance um so that was marvelous and um started going to these poetry events at that time and back then though i mean i was incredibly shy yeah, about yeah. reading in public mm. you know people couldn't hear me you know i could all i could barely turn the page of my poetry book you know so it's i've come a, an awfully long way so in terms of con yeah. confidence you yeah. know I mean, the lecturing previously had helped in terms of, mm. once I could access that again, uh, speaking to a room was no problem. It's different though, it's, isn't it? But it, it is, yeah, because you're revealing your heart, yeah, you know. Being a lecturer and yeah. standing up in front and talking about biology yeah. uh, is one thing because yeah. these are facts of yes. science that you're just relaying information yeah. on, whereas now you're, this is your own private yeah, little thing that's, that's right. getting put out there. If yeah, that makes any sense. it yeah. does absolutely yeah. make sense. Um, yes, it's because it's so personal. Yeah. You know, you speak your truth, and certainly if you want to perform without notes, if that's an eventual goal, mm. um, you've got to be word perfect then. Yeah, yeah. Not that anyone will necessarily know if you make a mistake, mm. but again, lecturing, you kind of have a conversation with the students. Yeah, yeah. But as a poet, you want to get it exactly right. Um, you know, especially if you've got a particular rhythm or cadence to the poem that you're doing. Um, so, yeah, that, as I say, it, it, it really opened up a whole new world. And um, and again, with same with singing. I mean, I'm better now. Yeah. Um, but when I first started, when I did, I, I joined a few folk nights. You know, I've got friends where I go to these um, these little folk nights, which I love. But when I first tried that, I could barely open my mouth. Mm. My throat was so tight. Yeah, yeah. It was terrible. It's anxiety, yeah. though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's the biggest barrier. And I would say on a personal level, my biggest goal right mm. now is to completely overcome that. I would love to be able to sing and play guitar and be right out there in front for an audience. Yeah. Um, so that's my personal goal outside of the duo, you know. Um, and I would love to sing well, as well as I know I can, without huge nerves, you know. Um, I'm still not quite there yet yeah, it's yeah. a lot better but it'll come it just yeah. naturally comes yeah you know I mean? the more you do it yeah th the better it gets you know so exactly yeah. but um is there anything that you would say to the people that are watching this that's never heard of you before why they would they need to go and follow you and support yourself and sonic duo yeah is there anything oh i mean i just think it's just the sheer release i think everyone is entitled to the kind of, to sharing in the kind of um, self-expression, release, yes. enjoyment that you get from listening to words, mm. um, you know, listening to, to sung verse as well and hearing drums because yeah. it's incredibly visceral. It's therapeutic. Therapeutic. It's one of those, particularly with drumming, it's a... It's a um, one of those body, mm. what they call body work, and you can yeah, work yeah. out all sorts of things from your subconscious, actually. Um, so I would say, if you're thinking about it, try to get out to events. When you get up a little bit of gumption, try to participate. Um, because the people that you meet, I mean, it snowballs incredibly. Yeah, yeah. I've made so many friends. I, I can't, I've lost count. I know so many people now in a completely different area of life. And I never dreamed that would ever happen. Mm. So um, you make incredible connections. Um, you know, it's a special world, and I wouldn't want to think that people might never experience that. Yeah. You know. So people should reach out to follow you? To, to yeah, because we can, sure, we can be like a conduit to that. 
you know and support each other yes. as well as as well as support what you're doing as well yeah so um is there any events coming up i know we said before yeah that, uh, it's it's a bit touch and go with COVID yeah. and that, but is yeah. anything have you got anything coming up at all? Uh, um, well, we've just we we had a couple of events just recently. Uh, one was at the Bombed Out Church. Mm. Um, there's a couple um, who run the Unusual Art Sourcing yeah, Company, yeah. and they had invited us to perform, and it was a, a brilliant venue and um, atmosphere there. So we've just done that, but we know that there will be others like it in future. Mm-hmm. Not don't know when exactly, but. That is probably a, a, a sort of semi-regular thing that yeah, we yeah. do. And the other one was um, Ali Harwood, um, who uh, r- runs Live Abards, which is a monthly poetry yeah, event yeah. at Marboils, um, which I support quite all the time, really. It's sort of my f- my favourite event. Yeah, but um, he, uh, he and his partner Victoria Ekpo they um, have started running a regular event at Liverpool Parish so mm. um, Our Lady in St Nicholas on yeah, the yeah. Strand which is another lovely venue um, so we've had about I think even during lockdown when it was permitted you know with distancing etc mm. we, we've had three events now there which is also quite lovely and that brings I mean the last one which we had on Saturday m- evening was really really busy. Yeah, People yeah. are desperate to get out, you know. So yeah. again, we're expecting more like that. Yeah, but yeah. I um and you know Jimmy Bongo runs um he runs events in Sefton Park. Mm. His Freedom of the Mind yeah, yeah. um events, which I would love to do. We, chiming just hasn't been right. I haven't been able to yet. Yeah, yeah. But I'm looking forward to that, even if it's on a personal level. You know, mm. uh, the only thing with the djembe for Sonic Duo is that it's um because it's all natural materials. You yeah, have yeah. to be careful with the elements. Like if it was raining a bit, yeah, yeah. it could affect the skin of the drum. You so said this with the sound as well before. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. So um, it it's more it's kind of more events that we've mm. done before, but I you know we're open to. But these loads coming. Yeah. And if you're watching yeah. this as well, obviously we're going to put the Sonic Duo and Lucy the Voices Instagram and Facebook. Yeah, that'd be great. Handles, should I say? Yeah. yeah or <laughs> Ales, URLs, yeah. up so that you can follow them as well. Yeah. But um, what are your socials? Um, Sonic Duo is Sonic underscore Duo. Mm-hmm. And we have a Sonic Duo page on Facebook. Yeah. So. Okay. There you go. Go follow them now. <laughs> but um, my personal one. I mean, if anyone wants to know, yeah. Um, do you want to give us that as well? Because I do p- sometimes put personal poetry on yeah, my yeah. own page. So that's um, on Instagram. That's I'm so fickle. Okay. <laughs> 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 Which is uh, something that my dad said to me many years ago, yeah, and, and, and uh, I think it's still true. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. probably true. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just on Instagram, not Facebook. Uh, yeah, I mean, much of the same material, just under yeah, my yeah, name, yeah. Lu- Lucy Pigavance on Follow Facebook. Follow the Instagram, yeah. Then. yeah. But um, it, it's been an absolute pleasure yeah, um, to, to have you on today. Um, I've learned so much <laughs> that um, I didn't know, <laughs> um, especially the Canada bit that shook me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been an amazing interview. And um, I just want to say thanks for coming on board. Yeah. Um, I want to wish you all luck with <laughs> what you're doing. And you've been tuned into Big Honda Online. This is Lucy the Voice. Mm-hmm. I am Lucy Rothschild. This is the Community Podcast. And have a nice week. Mm-hmm. Bless.